usually in a lifetime that Neptune Sun will eventually be after you get past the, the pathetic causes or the dependencies, it evolves to being dedicated to a cause. And a right dedication helps the self-worth and removes that guilt or that confusion and starts to direct it, which would really empower. So if she's accomplishing things and she's helping a cause, that would be a huge thing. That would balance a lot. So much hinges on living up and taking care of things. So you're not draining, you can't, if she had your lying parents, no, it wouldn't be there. It would be at a high cost. So um, she has to go out and prove things and make her own world. Okay, her Mercury, her Mercury's conjunct Uranus. Wow, that's an exciting line. That's really different than what we're seeing with the sun and the sun, the sun and the, well, the sun perhaps, but the moon and Aries, the impulse of the moon to Saturn, when it comes to the past or family or home, there's a worry. When it comes to her thinking, she has Uranus conjunct Mercury. She's a free thinker. She's in her own determined way. She figures things as herself and it's gonna be her own ideas. It's stubborn, it's exciting, it's innovative. And she's going to find her own way to make money, to use her resources to do what she wants to do. She's going to be very innovative with that Uranus to the Mercury. That's great for astrology, for seeing the shocking excitement of it, the openness of it. But she went through, well, I don't know how much she ran across it, and she may have been interested in it, but I know it's only been lately that she's been involved in coming through the class. Last three years, four or five years, she's been more interested in it. Probably that interest has always been there. It's squared by Jupiter in the fifth house. So it's ability to think independently, but there's also complications and confusions comes around kids, performance. There's a struggle with one's understanding it's, that it's squared. There's a tendency to exaggerate or to get really Hyper. The hyperness comes from the quick thinking, the rest of this has come from the Mercury Uranus. Anyways, Jupiter is going to exaggerate that. And she may not be that comfortable with it, but she has that quality. It's better when she goes with it, takes the conjunction of Uranus Mercury in Leo and does something independent. Like if she, as she's getting into astrology, you, you almost get the sense she's going to have to write a kind of shocking, exciting book around it. But it'll take some time to get the right understanding of it because she doesn't want to do it where it wouldn't be right or she want to be blamed for it or whatever. There's all these veils of, oh, I, I can't do this, the Saturn moon or the Neptune sun, talking herself out of things. But the um, one thing is clear, whatever needs to be done, she's going to do it. Now, the Mercury, so the Mercury, that there's no easy aspects, but the, the, there's the conjunction to your Mercury, to Uranus is the strongest aspect. And a square to Jupiter, you could say that's possible. When there's guilt from Neptune to the Sun, there would be a struggle to try and understand what's right and wrong with the Jupiter to the Mercury. But it will resolve in an independent way, not by what someone's telling her. She's going to figure it out for herself what she's going to do herself. As she does, that Mercury with Uranus and Leo is going to pump up the Sun, and the Sun's going to say, I need to have this, and the cancer is going to identify to the Sun, is and the Moon's going to go out and do it. It's the whole rising side take some pressures in, even though they're mixed up with the Saturn, the pressure, the confusion from the Jupiter, then the guilt from the Neptune is taking things in, other people's not responding to her as well. She's just going to pump up and do better. And they, she's not going to follow people that aren't deserving, but she might have to carry a few. Okay, so that's, that's the Mercury. If we look at the Venus, Venus is by itself in the third house in Virgo. No bad aspects, only good aspects. This is a good evaluation, a good sense of self-worth. It's Virgo, it's analytical, it's ruled by the Mercury, which goes back to the Mercury, goes back to the Sun, goes back to the projection, goes up to the Ascendant. It's all this stuff like, like the Virgo stuff pushes to the Mercury, Mercury's in Leo pushes to the Sun, the Sun's in the first house, pushes the Virgo, the Cancer Ascendant, the Cancer Ascendant, push it rising up and goes to the Moon, up an Aries in the 10th house. You can see how, whoa, the incentive to just make it happen, to live it, to do it. I'm not gonna be patient that Mercury is not going to be patient listening to idiots or listening to people who don't know what they're talking about. Okay, but certainly excited about following her own ideas and doing different things. Okay, when you see, when you put out, she didn't start being this, she hasn't been the astrologer, so it's, it's something that it's played out in other ways in her life, but it's certainly coming in now. 
So then you see the Venus, the Venus is eight degrees. So it's just out of orb to the Mars and Virgo and the Pluto, but the Venus, so to be able to make choices, make decisions, think about what one wants, think what's valuable, think what's worthwhile, what's not, what's what's likable, what's not likable, make good choices. That's her her Virgo is strong. Her her Venus and Virgo is a little prudish, a little fussy, but she knows what she's gonna want. That's where she's gonna she's gonna be practical there. Okay, so that's and that practicalness will have a strong effect on the way that Mercury interprets what one wants. Okay, so and that there's no bad aspects to it. You can't. It's hard to question her choices. Her choices are going to be, even if they're made quickly with the Mercury Saturn, makes quick decisions. It's based on a good sense of what's worthwhile. It's not. She can come to that conclusion quickly. Okay. Now the Mars. The Mars is in the third house. How she puts out energy. So the Mercury and the Venus are inner qualities. We'll see those evolve. They're all, all the planets are sun. Everything's seemingly moving down towards the IC. In the progressions, we know she's going to be the Leo for 29 years, then it's going to be the Virgo phase for 30, then it's going to hit the IC, and then it's going to go forward. So her chart is more about how she's living and actually did not so much about a career. However, how does she pay for it? How does she get that? She's not going to get it by waiting for other people to give it to her. <clears throat> so, okay. The Mars is about how she uses her energy. It's meticulous. It's in Virgo. It's fussy. It's picky. It's detailed. She gets a system. She goes on it. And her system is the Mercury Uranus. She's going to anything exciting or independent, she's going to work a system to do it. But that Mars, it's it's trying Neptune, it's trying it's a sextile Neptune, trying Saturn, no bad aspects except it's conjunct Pluto. That's a harsh aspect. But that's Pluto and Mars getting up. That's really strong. That's someone who could survive anything, but has a powerful willpower. And with the Mars Pluto, she'll be strong and people will love her, or hate her, love her or hate her. They'll like what she's doing or they'll fight what she's doing, but they won't win fighting what she's doing, but she'll have, she's very strong. And when she's, once she decides what she's doing and expressing it, she's, that's a very powerful thing. I'm going to, this is, I know what I'm motivated by, Virgo, I'm the IC. I know what I want. I'm going to do it. Mars Pluto. Okay, and that Mars Pluto rules the moon. But it also, all of those are ruled by Mercury, so it pushes into the effect. Of, it's affected by the independent thinking. So I get an idea. I know what I want. I get an idea. I'm going to do it. I'm really going to do it. I'm going to have to push all this together. I'm going to really make. So once she decides she wanted something and she's motivated by it, she's going to work like crazy. She's going to work harder than most people. It's a warrior aspect of Mars Pluto. Strong. So in this chart, there's a great capacity to make things happen, to do things, to have to prove things, even to a partner, prove she could do things. So the partner was sick, she'd take care of them. If things would happen, she'd take care of the rent, whatever. One of the things she couldn't do is surrender and be the follower. Be the passive surrender. Okay, I'll do what you want to do. I'll just back you up. She couldn't do that. That's the rising chart, that first house, the rising chart. She didn't have the, the same setting. She doesn't have the same energy and getting the response from other people. That's where her difficulty, Saturn, Uranus, Jupiter, and Neptune are. That's the setting side. The rising side's all on go. That's great. But the vulnerability the under that's the wave building up the undertow, the the undercurrent of the wave, it crashes down through this side and then it builds up again, goes on. That's her cycle. This is difficult. I gotta get out of this. I gotta make this happen. I gotta keep doing this because that's not I can't rely on that. So that balance is there. So Okay, that's the Mars. The Jupiter's in the fifth house. So that could be having to try and think, take care of the kids or take care of studying, learning kids. That's the Jupiter in the fifth house. Could be part in the part of sexuality, but it's really part in trying to think about what you should or shouldn't do, how they should be or how they shouldn't be, what, how to advise them what to do. Her whole idea is be ahead of the game, be ahead of the game, be ahead of the game. But if a problem comes up, then she has to She's going to start trying to come to a quick solution to work with it and make things happen. She, she's not going to, she's a good person to have on your side because she'll be taking care of things no matter what. Okay. Um, Jupiter. Even the Saturn by itself has got good aspects, not really bad. It's, uh, only Saturn, it's in the sixth house. That's some concern over health, but it's a need to be worked, to be of service, to have skills, to to take practical things to build up to work at practical things but it can be 
bones, healing skin. When there's extra pressure, bones, healing skin problems could come up with the Saturn and that eighth house. Um, in the sixth house, excuse me, in the sixth house. But the worry is that the pressure is how much work does she do? How much toll does it have on her health? Her moon's up in the tenth house. She's going to push it anyways. I got to take care of this. I got to do this. It's discipline. So she has been a, an executive, a, a leader, um, a businesswoman, and was in, had a whole team that she directed and organized. Well, in a huge way, I'm not sure if it's provincial or national, but she should, certainly had a large group of a power of it. She built up a career that was very established when she was holding things together and directing a lot of people to make things happen. Okay, so she's really lived up to that. I don't really know about the personal side that much, but there's this side I do know, and then. Um, We'll get to the timings and stuff. So, but you want you gotta have a sense of the sun, sense of the moon, the need to prove, the need to be best, and that my kids gotta be best too. So her expectations with the kids will be just as strong as her parents' expectations of her. All the parents' expectations of her are not necessarily realistic. They had a complication. There was something was not exactly clear with it, but um, she would live up to it. She would be so strong where she is. That the weeks, the vulnerable spot is taking care of the kids. She take care of everything, they, whether they live up to it or not. That's another issue. Okay, so teenagers, you can do everything right, but you never know exactly. All you can do is launch them, and then they they make their friends and do things anyway. Anyways, um, okay, so um, yeah, that's what I want, I want to. That's that's a fairly good okay. The ascendant projects the personal sensitivity it feeds into when we talk about the ascendant responds to people. That's ruled by Saturn in the sixth house. It's a practical response, it's a business response. How do I improve? What do I work? But it's how you can respond to other people. Let me fix this for you, let me work this for you. Says, there's a little inhibited, but a need to get skills to allow her to be helpful to other people. 